Welcome back. So starting out the week, you can see here Jeff's been working on uh, getting the first of these elevators ready to close out. And you see he's notched out that section there where it um, basically comes into contact with the uh, hinge hanger. And as you can see there, there is uh, you know some up elevator available there. And it doesn't need to be a lot because ultimately what we're doing is reducing the um, square footage of the four plane when we're doing that which is going to decrease yeah, lift and but up. at the same time you know you don't have to generate as much drag as well and Jeff's uh, working on the other side there just getting those ribs there ready to be bonded into that skin and Devon's uh, creating a little cover plate here for the reservoirs for the brake um, system so we can um, bleed the brakes. Um, we didn't actually get one of these fittings with the brake kit, which is unfortunate. So what Devon's doing is just basically putting a tap in there into this um, aluminum plate and going to be putting just a little um, right angle fitting in there. And uh, we'll be able to hook up the vacuum system to it and uh, pull the brake fluid up through um, starting at the calipers and all the way up through to the reservoir. And back in the cabin I've been working on uh, getting the little handbrake uh, knob lever thing sorted out. So as you can see, just pretty basic really. Just push it in, it kind of clicks into place there. Um, stop it from accidentally sort of pulling out while you're flying from vibration or whatever. So that way there's no chance of landing with the, um, with the brakes engaged. And uh, you'd, ha you'd still have to actually push on the brakes to um, to do that and then have it pull out to lock it. But if you look behind here, you can actually see the lever there in the middle of the screen just being actuated there. That's, you know, where the valve is there on top of the keel. So just, you know, a bit of a rough um, thing just to get that done. But, you know, just at this point, as I was saying before, I just want to get the jobs done. So uh, back on the pressurization now, um, as you can see here, that thing is pulled all the way back in there now. So I've actually got the pressurization system um, working now. Um, and I just needed to uh, do a few little tweaks on it there. And I actually found out that I damaged um, the connector that goes into the controller. So I've ordered a new one of those because the couple of the pins weren't staying locked in place. So that was causing a problem. And uh, Devon's now working on uh, creating this bracket that I showed you last time. Uh, finishing off that um, supports the coolant reservoir on the motor on the engine there so just done that out of again out of just a piece of aluminum and it just picks up uh, some mounting points on either side and back onto that cowling um, after just putting some micro on that area where um, they beefed it up and Jeff and Devon they've uh, done a layup or I guess that Devin's done a layup over there just to sort of clean it up so it has a bit of an air airfoil shape now and back in the center console so here I've hooked up the gear uh, switch there now and what I've done is I've actually split it out so I've got two different grounds going to it there and one is a normal ground for the uh, gear down switch and the other one, this black wire, that's actually a ground that's going to be only active um, when you're at airspeed, and that's from this pressure switch we have. That way you won't be able to accidentally lift the gear up unless the aircraft is uh, airborne and moving. So now that i got the pressurization system working, um, what remained was to hook up the switch for the cabin dump um, switch, basically, so you could dump the cabin um, from any pressure if you needed to and also what I've done is I've got an overhead switch now which is going to al allow us to sort of um, close the valve manually or close those valves manually on the uh, forward bulkhead there um, regardless of what the airspeed is but the way it's normally going to work is you won't actually have to touch the system when you take off and you get up to about 60 knots or whatever um, the pressurization system will automatically initiate and uh, close the valves and start um, you know keeping the cabin pressurized and uh, when you come down to land it sort of schedules itself to deep depressurize and you shouldn't even need to do a dump um, of the system so that should work out well so uh, here you can see now that's the one there that's the dump switch so I've got that wired in there just with a, a connector on the end I've got connectors on everything now so I can just bring the console up there and just plug all the connectors in and 
and then slide it forward into place. And Devon's uh, getting started here with uh, getting ready to lay up another one of these or another set of these uh, fences, wing fences for the end of the wings because unfortunately something happened there where the, this is out of shape, it doesn't fit in, or well, the old one's out of shape, it doesn't actually fit the curvature of the wing. So he's laying up new ones that Jeff sort of shaped there with some foam. And here's our uh, pressure switch for the airspeed. So basically there's a, a common... Um, connector on there and then a normally open and a normally closed so this is going to do two different functions um, the air goes in basically either side there and comes out the other side and it's just from the pedo and uh, how it's going to work is that we've got the ground there on the common and on the uh, normally open uh, we're going to have the landing gear that other ground that I was telling you about um, so you won't be able to accidentally like lift the landing gear unless this pressure switch is activated and then on the other side we got the normally closed and that's going to be for the pressurization system so that'll automatically um, set up the system until you take off um, so anyway there I've got that installed there as you can see and the red uh, tubing that I've got coming out of there just runs in through that bulkhead there and that that goes to the uh, the Anaha system the GSU 25 so uh, and then you know I've got the wiring run through there and it goes through one of the 28-pin uh, um, bulkhead connectors there. So now I just have to wire it up on the inside of the cabin. And Devon was waiting for the hardware because we didn't have just the quite uh, right length of bolts for this, but uh, that arrived there Tuesday today. So uh, he was able to finally uh, get that fully mounted into place. So that's another job finished on the engine. And uh, this is how it looks when it's all done. So two different bolts there, each hooking up to um, the pipes there for the intercooler. And the other two bolts uh, holding the actual reservoir in place. So now that the pressurization system's working, I'm going to give you a bit of a walkthrough to show you how it's all working. So um, when you first fire it up there, it basically has these valves completely open. And that's to, you know, not have any pressure maintained in the cabin. So you can see I've got my fingers all the way behind there. It just means that it's basically coming through. Now if I turn the ship power on, um, it takes a couple of seconds, but then the controller down the back there will click into, into power and um, start actually just initializing. And through the RS-232 connection now I've got uh, on the tablet here, I can uh, open up the app here. And uh, sometimes you have to... I don't think I double tapped on it right the first time. No, I didn't, so I'll do it again. And uh, from here, you'll be able to see uh, what's going on on the controller. So this is their, you know, RS-232 uh, thing that they provide. And if you click on the info tab there, it takes a second and it shows up um, all the different parameters of what's happening. And if you look up the top there, you can see that uh, the um, squat switch is set in WOW which is weight on wheels meaning that we're sitting on the ground and that's now hooked up to that pressurization switch or the sorry the airspeed switch and uh, so if you look in there it's basically um, set to open there so that pressure switch there ultimately once you take off and climb that'll toggle um, which is going to have the same effect as this um, switch I put on the ceiling here which is actually the door seals I've actually changed it now so that's just going to be cabin pressure so triggering that you'll see that the um, squat switch now says flight meaning that you're climbing up and if you can you can actually hear it a little bit but uh, it's inflating those um, the bladders in behind there which is going to close off these valves and you can see them basically slowly closing off there and they inflate quite uh, firmly actually you can't really just come and push on them there and make them move at all uh, so anyway that's basically what that will do once you take off or once you come up to you know 60 knots or 70 knots whatever we set that that pressure switch to um, and then once it uh, equalizes there it, it'll settle down and uh, it'll stop the pumps and it'll just basically maintain that shut and only use the pumps um, in when it needs to adjust the pressure there. And of course, this is all the outflow stuff. I've also got my own uh, inflow thing working there for pressure. So you see there it still says flight there for the squat switch. And uh, everything else is just, you know, all the other different parameters in there. It tells you the solenoid positions and the pump and that sort of stuff. So there's the dump switch that I have. It's protected. 
and uh, if I wanted to dump the cabin I just throw that switch up and you'll see there that the mode the manual mode goes to dump and that'll mean that it's basically opening the valve so this would be like an emergency situation or whatever or if you just you know it wasn't dumping the, the pressure uh, for some reason so you can see those are opening up there now and get my finger behind there so that would let uh, the pressure out of the cabin and um, then uh, the next thing would be um, well actually that's that's kind of um, an emergency situation to do that but you normally wouldn't have to do that and uh, as you can see there's that little RS232 cable that I bought on uh, Friday evening and uh, just hooking that up to the uh, laptop you know gives you that connection so turning off that um, the switch and turning off the dump valve there basically puts it back into on the ground mode and you see there the squat says um, weight on wheels again W O W um, and so it just basically initializes back to the position where the valve is is just normally open and allowing air to move so uh, yeah that's pretty much how it all works now and that, again just that that's the outflow side of things the inflow is the stuff I've shown you before that's working from the back end of the cabin and uh, you know my display on that one is Bluetooth so we have two different ways of doing it so and each one can kind of run independently almost um, so anyway that's how that all works and last time I mentioned I was going to show you these uh, little power converter things that we had so we've only got one of those being used right now and that's to power up the uh, little Wi-Fi hotspot but these are pretty neat um, you can put all kinds of different voltage into them and they provide you with 5 volts and I think you, know, you can actually adjust exactly how much comes out of it but uh, it's a, you know it's a fully in integrated circuit and designed for exactly this for providing you know good stable power supply from you know a much larger or quite a bit larger voltage so anyway that's what uh, that's that is and at the end of the afternoon uh, Devin was getting through with uh, laying up these new uh, straight fences so he's got the first one laid up there and just about ready to do the second one and uh, before the day was out he had both of them done and uh, Jeff helped him uh, put the vacuum bag on there so those will be ready uh, I guess sometime tomorrow something so we'll be able to get those bonded on as well and we've got the high sole in now so we'll be able to close out those winglets and there's that little uh, um, cover that Devin made and it just goes on these um, the brake reservoirs there and then pull a vacuum on there to pull uh, fluid all the way through from the brake caliper all the way up through all the you know cylinders and stuff out to the reservoir so there's the little vacuum pump that we're going to use to do that with a little cylinder on the end there or reservoir so it doesn't get any uh, fluid in it and uh, by the end of the day I started testing uh, some of the lines just to make sure that they were holding good vacuum before I start pulling any fluid in there and uh, I got a few problems and stuff so we're gonna have to fix that but uh, that's an adventure for tomorrow anyway that's our update for the first half of this week and uh, tune in again on Saturday and uh, see what we've been up to thanks again for watching mm -hmm.